This is the codependency release. How does that sound? Does anyone feel a little codependent, meaning just stuck to someone, stuck to an ex, stuck to something, maybe money, stuck to your money story, stuck to your job, right? Stuck to people's opinions of you. You could be codependent on anything. It's not just you're codependent on a person or your ex or your partner in a romantic relationship, right? Like what else can you be codependent on? What are you codependent on? Share with us if you want to what you're codependent on right now. You're codependent on results. You're codependent on body weight. Wow. Codependent on a job codependent on everything, my partner, food, the now, the works, weight, um, relationships. What if you wrote down what you're codependent on, right? Are you codependent on being seen? Are you codependent on a person in your life, right? Just take a second and write down maybe one or several things. If you, even if the answer is everything, whatever it is, codependent on your weight, right? Just take a second, write it down codependent on and and be brave like say the thing that you don't want to say by the way you'll notice the thing you don't want to say is the thing you're stuck to why is that because you haven't owned that that's the case you understand what i'm saying you haven't really gotten to an awareness that that's a, the case i'm not saying that you don't know it but there's also a resistance to it that hasn't really brought it out into light that says, I'm codependent on being seen by this person. I'm codependent on my mom's opinion. I'm codependent on uh, being broke. Some people are codependent on being broke. They got love for being broke, right? Codependent on healing. Wow. So if you're codependent on it, that means you're the one doing it, right? That you're the one healing. Not you're going to connect to God and let God do it through you right now, right? So feel free to write some stuff down. Know that anything you said, all the things you just said are almost all the same thing. In other words, they're all a thing outside of you that's here bringing up a pattern that's inside of you, right? So whether it's your partner, whether it's money, whether it's your parent, whether it's work, whether it's your weight, there's these energies in your body that these things on the external bring up in the internal. What is this thing that gets triggered and mad, right? About something outside you, about someone not getting you, about not being understood, about feeling unseen, about your money story, whatever. What are these patterns? So we bring light to the thing on the external, and then we notice what it's bringing up on the internal. Lorraine says, what others say. So the next thing is notice what it brings up. And you could just write down the thing. And then I want you to write down what it brings up. Like when you think about, when you think about a person you're codependent on, for instance, right? What does it bring up? Does it bring up, it could be words like abandonment. It could be words like unlove, but it could also be just a block in my body. You could write a clump in my stomach, right? Emptiness in my chest or in my neck right? Anxiety, abandonment, rejection, driving, little complaining, anxiety in my head, shaming, sadness, dismissed. I love that you're just saying it right now. Feel free to write them down, you know, whether you do it in journal, whether you want them on here too, right? I want these things to be totally allowed, right? So we now see the outside and what it brings up on the inside. In old school teachings of spiritual self-help work, it's always about letting go of the outside. But how do you let go of the outside if it's bringing up this thing on the inside? Right? In other words, how do you let go of the outside only if that thing is magnetizing some trigger inside of your body? You can't. Because the magnet's still holding on. It's codependent on that, right? Glenn says, what's the difference between codependency and attachment? Really nothing. Just different angles of the same kind of thing. Right? I want you to notice what that outside thing, that usually your focus is on the outside, right? If only she would understand me. Well, now we're not focusing on this. One of the things I'm going to offer you 
starting today, we can bring those things up to see what the trigger is, right? We can bring these things up to see what the trigger is. But then once the trigger is brought up, we let go of the thing. So we can look at what it's bringing up, right? So that person in my life said this, I'm triggered. Then we go right here. What most of us do is we stay on the person. So we never get to the roots. You got to get to the roots. Picture the roots to what you're codependent on are inside your body. And you're staring at the top of the tree over there. But we need to look at the roots. That's what I do on all those hot seats, right? What am I doing in the hot seats? What is a hot seat usually? It's someone talking about something going on in their external. And I say, what's it bring up for you? And then sometimes they'll go to another thing in the external. I'll go, no, 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 no. What's it bring up for you? If you really want to understand this, watch, this will show up with every single hot seat. It'll even be things that you think are internal things, right? But they're all things that are on the external, right? Bringing up something on the inside. And our insanity and our pain is keeping the focus on the external and ignoring the inside. What is a question I ask a lot? What's that bring up for you? Right? So what do you feel? They'll be like, you don't get it. My dad said this. Now he took the car. He won't talk to me ever again. I'm like, what do you feel about it? I feel he's an asshole. That's not, no, you're focused on him. This is where your craziness exists. This is where this is where it stays in a circle, in a loop of crazy pain because you focus on the outside and life is going, look on the inside. You cannot just release the outside with the inside still there. You'll just replace whatever you let go of with the exact same thing because I want you to picture inside of your body, right? Inside of your body is a magnet right? So if I undo the external, the magnet's still there. The triggers in your body, right, are magnets. So even if you change the circumstance, if you do not get to the root of what's inside, you bring another one there. Someone said, Kyle, please explain how you get to the root. I will. I will. Let it flow how it flows, right? This is really, really, really big because Imagine that you have this magnet that says, I'm codependent on this type of person. And then you have this person that doesn't do all the things that you wanted them to do in a certain way, right? So you go, I'm getting over this person. The magnet's still here. New person, exactly the same situation, right? Same with like a job. This job doesn't fulfill me, blah, 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 blah. But what attracted you to this job, right? The magnet that's inside. So the magnet's aiming for that. So you will probably replace it and go to the next job. If you saw yesterday's hot seat, you saw me work with a woman named Emily who let go of her job and then for six months traveled, but the magnet was still there, right? So all the patterns that were from her childhood were still activated. So she was shaming herself while she left. She was talking from the old pattern of her dad's consciousness, right? saying you shouldn't be doing this you're making a mistake you're you own you are what you do you're only you're being irresponsible so she's making her soul's moves while keeping the old density energy going right so what did that do that kept the magnet going and she goes basically the question was Kyle I left and for 6 months went on vacation and the universe didn't make a bunch of money for me well, yeah, the magnet is still in the old world, even if you let go of the external. This is why letting go of the external, this is why letting go of the external is not enough. Sometimes letting go of the external, right? Sometimes letting the, go of the external can expose this thing. But if you keep looking at the external, you're just going to replace this magnet with the same thing in a new way. And your consciousness is getting higher now. So in the old days, people did just used to switch out the outside because the consciousness wasn't deep enough for them to look at what's going on on the inside. In the old days, in the 40s or whatever, you maybe switch out the external. I'll just switch my job. There's not even emotions involved in it, it looks like, from what I see. All of America goes to war. Bam, Marilyn Monroe. Like, it's this old, just like, we aren't in emotion about it. Like, or at least we are, but we're not looking at it, right? Different time. Now, 
you can't just let go of the external if the magnets are still there. Why is that? Because the light is going in and it's breaking apart aspects of a false you, right? That's stuck to the external. So breaking apart the external doesn't change it as just is, right? In other words, this isn't enough because the magnet's still looking for lack. So people were saying, how do you get rid of the magnets? Now we're talking, right? Do you understand that's the next level? And a way that we start to get over the magnets is by identifying that they are not you. They are magnets. Because what keeps a magnet there is the identification that I am that. You don't even say magnet. You just call it me, right? You just call it me. I have to get rid of this person. Who's the I that has to get rid of it? I have to get over this. That's not you. That's the magnet. Everything that you have to do has an unconscious idea that you are what you do versus what you are, that you are more than the now or actually less than the now. You are an accomplishment or a story or a victim or your old family dynamic. You are whatever you grew up seeing, right? That's trying to fall off too. So this is why if you're feeling codependent on something, you can't just get rid of it at the level of the person or the thing. The magnet's still there. Right? Deep breath in. If you're moving from the magnet, if you're moving from the magnet, the magnet you think is you, you're not actually identified with your real you. You are in a small, separate self story. You are this moment only, which contains all that is including it contains the magnets. So if you think you are the magnet, you're sitting here merging between addictions, right? Because the magnet still needs the thing. This is the power of listening to the now. Because if you listen long enough, you start to become more than now looking at the energy that's trying to do something the energy that's trying to overcome, the energy that's trying to get rid of. Every energy of tension, every single energy of tension is a pattern. Everyone, you have to get open to you didn't know that. Lori said, what if I don't know who I am now, magnet or not? You have a magnet that says you need to understand what you are. You're now. It's beyond understanding. Think of how much understanding what you are caps you. That is so small. You are all that is. There's no way you could mentally understand that. Deep breath in. So the true depth of mindfulness is transformative powers, which is an interesting name, says, is meditation the tool to help for this? In all caps, you are looking at this from a doing thing and no doer can do this. It's time for your doing it the right way to dissolve into the now. This what do I do energy, right, implies nothing else does anything. It implies that things don't just happen. I mean, if you're the doer, why is it just you? Why not you're responsible for the waves and, and the oceans? Why not you're responsible for the rivers and the, the trees? You're not responsible for your hair growing or my partial hair growing. You're not responsible for your heart beating. You're not responsible, right? Why do you think you're responsible 
for your healing? Is that the one thing God doesn't do? You are going to do it. What do I do? I don't need God for that. I'm going to egoically do this. Meanwhile, God's got everything else going on. This is ego. Ego's what do I do? What do I do? You're supposed to be confused, Jose. This is about now not understanding mentally. Be confused. The all that isness isn't confused. A small self is, right? A small self would have to be confused because it's learning things bigger than it is. Think of how we've trained ourselves that we need to understand. Picture a baby, <laughs> really picture a baby going into the world, being able to make sense out of everything. Everything from a toddler's life seems bigger than it is. And how does a child understand? By experiencing, right? A child understands walking by walking and falling down, walking and falling down, walking and falling down until finally they're walking. They can't mentally understand it first before they do it. So I want you to do that now. I want you to go into the spiritual realm in the world without needing to understand it, but hearing it, listening to it, being with it, being with it in boredom, being with it with no fix, being with it now. What I want you to understand is the more you're okay with not understanding, but you still listen, like tangibly listen to the silence, tangibly listen to the space here, tangibly listen to a furnace that's going on or an air conditioner, listen to your heart beating, right? Marley says, what if you aren't okay with the now? That's a pattern. There's no such thing. Only a pattern isn't okay with it. In fact, that's the ego. The ego's biggest concern is the now. Because the now will see through ego's bullshit and dissolve it. So the ego is not okay ever with the now. Ever. The ego is never okay with the now. Your soul is the now right? The ego is never okay with the now. It will always be escaping the now. It will look for a problem that it can overcome. So it's like the hero and it feels like it's evolving, yet it's creating the problem that it's evolving, right? I have to get people to like me. So what, how does it do that? Well, I start with lack that they don't, right? So it creates a problem. They don't like you. Go in there and fix it. You see that? The ego has a thing to go externally fix separate from God on its little small self. And weirdly, the ego is constantly looking to do things for itself. I get people to like me. I win over other people. I'm better, superior, or less than. The ego goes, I'm less than other people. Meanwhile, they're all you. Right? So... I understand there's going to be a couple of people that don't get this and that's totally fine, but for everyone that's getting it, and if you don't still, you don't need to get it. My offer to you is don't get this, hear it. Isn't it funny? It's called get, which means have, meaning own. I want that to be my accomplishment. No, don't get it. Hear this, hear this, hear the now, hear the now, hear the now. Deep breath in, hear the now. Hear it now. Make it not make sense to your small box, right? You got a little box in your head. You're going to try and shove this stuff into your, you can like, imagine this, check this out. If you're just an AM radio, only AM, you don't get FM or XM or satellite. An AM radio will never get serious satellite radio, right? An AM radio will never get XM radio. It'll never get this. So it's time for you to upgrade your radio versus trying to stay in AM radio to pick up frequencies that you can't reach. How is that? You can upgrade what type of a radio you are by listening, right? But if you're trying to stay the small self that's figuring everything out, 
you're missing out on a billion other frequencies. It's not just XM and Sirius. There's a billion other stations. There are so many other things that cannot reach you because you're just like, I don't get it. And you're like, just like you're, this is your antenna. It's just like, Mrr. but if you listen longer, it'll be a straight up and down, holy crap tower antenna because you listen to the now and not your mediocre thing to fix. See, the ego just picks one small separate self thing to get its own thing. That's the me, that's the small self. That's the ego, right? It's just, I need to get that one out of 8 billion people per people to get me whatever. And your antennas on that teeny antenna on that one issue. How do I get a raise at my work? What? Meanwhile, XM radio, which is serious, all 10 billion other stations and frequencies can't come in because you're at, because you got little magnets to that issue. So when we listen and we keep listening beyond what we understand, imagine, imagine if you listen for 20 minutes, eventually just because you're listening to the now versus your issue. Imagine you create FM too. By listening longer, you strengthen your antenna. And you get okay with things like boredom. You get okay with feeling unseen. You get okay with all these patterns. Now you got FM. You listen for a few days, maybe you got Sirius. Maybe you got a few stations on Sirius. Right? So when you're in AM, you can only get what you understand from AM, right? So this is really interesting because if you are just playing from an AM person trying to get this, you're defending staying in the AM. And I'm going, just so you know, there is an entire life of frequencies trying to reach you. So what we do is we listen and we understand there's a lot of, I don't understand anything for a while because we're choosing to listen past the understander and feel the unconditional love of the all that is. And for it to get to the serious and the XM and everything, it actually has to purge your magnets to your small story. It'll actually have to go, I need you to let go of this. Not only the person, but the part of you, you created with the person. I need you to let go. And then you'll let go of, by the way, you can let go of the magnet and that person could still be in your life. You just won't be codependent on them, right? You can let go of the magnet and still have things in your life. You can let go of an attachment to a person and stay married to them if you want. You don't have to just get rid of everything. You can, but. The person or the thing is bringing up things for your magnets to be seen. Sometimes the best route is to let go of the person so you can see your magnet. But don't just let go of the person or the thing and keep the magnet there. This is your new opportunity to listen to a much bigger frequency that's here right now. All of the frequencies of all of the XM satellite stations exist within you. Kristen says, what if regret comes up? Then it's supposed to, because anything that comes up was inside of your body. Anything that comes up was inside of your body. It's not coming from the outside. So if it comes up, it's on its way out. Anything that comes up, to, do you understand that? Anything that comes up was coming from inside of your body. Right. So we want that. This is like we're doing this and you go, what if P comes up? Well, it's not coming up from the outside. Right. You have to go P from here. Everything you're scared of, unless there's literally something dangerous physically happening to you on the outside, everything you're scared of is coming from the inside. You think it's the outside, but if it's not literal flight or fight, then it's coming from the inside. Every single thing. It could be middle of the night. It's 2 a.m. You hear a car door slam. 
everyone has a different reaction. So the factor isn't the car door, it's what's stored in your body, the trauma in your body. Everything, everything. What if regret comes up? Then it's inside your body. What if guilt comes up? Then it's inside your body. And your avoidance of guilt and regret or whatever yours was, is why you're codependent on the external. The magnets were sitting on top of those feelings being seen and processed. Once those feelings are seen and processed, they go. And then guess what? The codependency would go too. The codependency's purpose is to block these things from being seen. You understand that? The codependent, your codependency on money, on your issues, on people, on an ex, on a partner, on a friend, on being seen. Its purpose is to keep the things you don't want to look at tight in a box stored inside of your body. And the universe knows that and it's doing too much work on you. The universe goes, the universe goes, open that shit up. Now, if you're like, no, I'm going to keep the person here. So you don't look in the box. The universe is going to be like, I said, open it up, make them leave you. And you'll be like, nope, no, I'm going to keep them. No, nope, I, I nope, I'm just going to hold on. It's fine. That's fine. I have my money issue. I'm going to hate my job. The universe is like, I'm pulling this regret out of your body because you're living a lie. You're literally sitting on top of a box of regret, abuse, abandonment, loneliness, whatever. So the universe is brilliant. The universe is like, yep, we're in a time where you cannot move forward with that shit in your body. So imagine you've created a false identity that's sitting on top of the box and the false identity is grabbing onto everything on the external. Look at me, that's ego, but you're calling it your name. It's not you. It's false. You're the now. The now sees all of this. The now sees the whole thing. And so we get scared to be in the now because the second you do, it starts to move your fake you off the box. Then you feel a lot of pain because, well, I might let go of that person and then I might feel regret. Well, what's wrong with that? And, oh, I get it. Regret stored in the box. Then you listen longer and you start to freak out. You have all these problems and all these things come up and everything like that, but they're coming up from the inside. So they're actually on their way out. You're just releasing. And then you're the now, not the character sitting on top of the box, grabbing onto your partner. You better not abandon me because if you do, I have to look in the box. If you leave me, I have to look inside the box. And God's like, that would be the best thing you could do. And I'm going to take you to a frequency where looking in the box isn't even scary. The now, the longer you listen to the now, the longer you listen to the now, the less scary the box is. Because you start to move to kind of this true, loving, invincible you. That's you. You feel that? This is you. You just think you're the small one that's sitting on the box. Box of trauma. That the character that sits on the box does not have the capacity to deal with the box of trauma. Because if it does, the character that sits on the box would die because its purpose is to stay on the box of trauma. Like, can you literally see a little boy or a little girl that's done? No, don't look here. Don't, I don't want to be seen. Don't look in this. Don't look under this. My identity is keeping you away from the trauma box. So the character you thought was you is going to eventually dissolve because once you get off, once you let go, the trauma box releases regret. It makes you're allowed to be feeling regret. You're allowed to feel unseen, abandoned, unloved, everything. So sometimes it's great to let go of the person too, because then you really see you have nothing to grab onto. We want to get you to a place where you have nothing on the physical third density world to grab onto. You can't grab a drink. You can't grab social media. 
You can't grab a partner or an ex. Kelsey says that's scary. So what that means is they're scary inside of your box, right? Inside of your little box in your chest, there's a scary feeling. Scary is allowed. Our problem with scary is we run from it. There's nothing inside of your body that could actually kill you. Isn't it amazing? Scary is just energies inside of the body. Like, is that? And now Paula says, but it's overwhelming sometimes. Isn't it funny that we have the illusion of overwhelm from just sitting and hearing what's inside of our body? It would only be overwhelming to a littler person sitting on top of a box. You're just looking inside of a box. The now is not overwhelmed ever. The sensations are strong. Get present. So Paula says the sensations are strong. Everyone get present right now. This is the core reason for our codependency on everything in the world. And this is why in this time, the universe is a non-negotiable now. It goes for us to move forward as a society. We're going to remove all these traumas in the box. What type of people would we become with those traumas healed, with us present and listening and caring about ourselves and each other? What, what, what would we be if those things inside of the box were gone? What codependency wouldn't be there? What control over other people or control towards us would dissolve instantly? What don't you, you can't have that opinion about me would be gone. I really want you to think of that for a second. What world would we have if all of the darkness and sides of ourselves were gone? If the forgiveness of the now took over our resistance to our childhoods? What life, what planet would this be? Now, right now, we have like 400 or so people on, and I know there will be a bunch of people that see the replay. Imagine if just 400 people did that work. Do you understand how much you would start an opening? Like a soul version of multi-level marketing would happen. Like our soul opens up, and then people around you would be like, ah, I'm going to subscribe to that too, and they're purging theirs right? You just see this ripple, multi-level soul, soul flip, right? There's a ripple effect. And it's not just the people around you see it. We're seeing a world now. The amount you've released is the, isn't it weird? The amount you've released almost is the exact match to where the world is right now. You've seen some darkness here. You've seen some darkness in the world. Used to be in denial, no idea that this box was even here. And you had no idea back then that the government was who they truly were too. You had no idea that the world had this level of darkness. There's some darkness we saw that matched the darkness that we totally knew about. Nothing was going on under here. You didn't know any of this. Now it's just like, this is what's coming up for me. That's how we talk now. What's coming up for me is, yeah, it's because that box is opening, no matter how much your little kid is sitting on top of it. And this is why relationships are collapsing left and right. This is why jobs are collapsing left and right, because they are the codependency that's needed to stay on top of the box. And life goes, no, nope, we're opening the box, whether you're there or not. So we're making family members leave family members. We're making people lose their job. We're making people not even have their own control-based like agenda of what their life is going to be. How many times have you declared, I'm going to start this new project and you don't do it? You can only declare things that the universe wants for you, not what you've decided. You can follow what the universe has, or you can delay what the universe has, have your agenda so you can think you're staying on the box for another week and watch as it doesn't work. Then you go back to an addiction and finally you give up and then, okay, universe, what do you want? And the universe goes, I have everything for you. Follow me. The universe has everything for you. The universe has decided 
who you can be with. The universe has decided what relationships you can be in or what you can't. You can fight it for a long time, right? You can fight it, you can force it, you can whatever, and it doesn't work. Or you can follow this higher calling. That higher calling is you. The fighter is a pattern you developed in your childhood. It's going, follow me. That's you. That's your soul. That's what you truly want in life. Marley goes, but you want to be with them. I understand, but I promise you, the codependent pattern wants to be with them. I want to be with them so I'm not alone or abused or abandoned or whatever. I'm going to mentally come up with a few good memories, but if it's not working, it's not working for a reason. Are you with me? Deep breath in. You cannot argue with what life has for you. It's just you spinning plates and life's collapsing the plates faster and faster. There's freedom in there for you. You know what your highest is. You know what in life you need to do, even if it's against something you've done a long time. You know, you know what it is. You know, when you, we did a call the other day, someone was talking about a relationship. Should they let go or not? And I said to the audience, if you weren't on the call, I said, on the chat, I said, who here is in a thing that they don't know if they should be in or not? They don't know. And then a bunch of people said, me, 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 me. And then I said, okay, here's my real question now. Are you sure you don't know? And a bunch of people said, no. I'm not sure that I don't know. In other words, I know. I know what I need to do. Your pain is your argument with what you need to do. Did you get that? There's what you know you need to do. Your stress is your argument with what you know you need to do. When you follow what you know you need to do, you will still feel crying and release and you will release the old patterns that would have fought the other way. But there is a thing in your life. There's a thing you know you need. Not, I better start this project and get this thing. I'm talking about how many things are you starting because it dances around the thing you know you need to do. Do you get what I mean by that? Like I'm starting this because I, I know there's a real thing I need to do and I'm stuck to that and I'm scared. So I'm going to start this thing. Maybe if I do this, universe is like, yeah, that's not going to work. I'm not going to let you have that. There's a, there's a bigger thing to follow that would bring up a bunch of pain into freedom, right? Right? So everything you do that's not the true thing you need to do is codependency. Is a false you sitting on a box preventing what needs to come up from coming up. And God is going, we're just going to open the box anyway. We're just going to, we're just going to pull this open. And you're just like, no, no, maybe if I write my book, ta -da! and it's like, no, nope, I didn't tell you to write the book. That's a fix. When I do a one-on-one, -on -one, I can hear when someone says they need to do something. I hear, and I can feel the vibration of so that they aren't what? So they don't feel regret. So they don't feel like a failure. So they don't feel shame. All patterns they learn from childhood, every one of them. So life's trying to purge what you thought you were when you grew up making your parents your gods who have egos. Life goes, yeah, I'm letting go of that. So you are connected to me and you get all the stations and all the next steps and feel complete in the now, right? Complete with yourself. I'm taking it all out of your way. And I will replace it with amazing shit. I will replace it with callings. I will replace it with soulmates. I will replace it with best friends. I will replace it with support. I will replace it with you. Amber says, how do you make sure you have removed the magnet before you quit the job? I'm not sure that you, that's the, has to be the order, right? I think make sure is a pattern. 
make sure you do it right so that you don't what? Why do we got to do it right? Let's hear right here. Let's hear right here. Let's hear right here. Oh, there's a belief in punishment. What if we, instead of thinking of the old world, which is punishment or normal, right? Heaven or hell, it's fine if you want. What if we make hell just arguing in the now with your soul, right? Just make it arguing in the now with your soul. Right, hell is believing your pattern because it's painful. And then we have to have addictions and all these things. Heaven is following your calling. It's following you. Everyone take a deep breath in and let's hear what you want you to know. Let's hear what you need to surrender. Let's hear what is a magnet. Let's hear it could be tangible next steps. It might not be. Let's hear the shame, Sage. Let's hear the shame. If there is there just checking. Does anyone have shame in their body? Is there shame lodged in anyone's body on the call? It's in mine. Does anyone have it? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, feel that. So it hasn't been allowed. It hasn't been loved. A great new step forward would be to sit and let shame, let the shamed you from the past just sit on your chest or sit in your stomach and be seen by you. Don't look at me, but look at me. That's what the shame says for Sage. So maybe that's what wants to come up today. Maybe there's a wall. Maybe there's higher frequencies. Maybe it needs you to be okay with being a mess. Does anyone need to be a little bit more okay with messiness? Right? Are we all now from past spiritual teachings, perfectionists that need to get it right? Can you let there be a freaking mess? Can you be allowed to do this totally wrong? Let it be a mess. Let it be a mess. Let shame come out whichever way it wants. Don't this perfection shit. That's a kid on top of the box. <sighs> I want you to take a deep breath in and listen to the now. And listen to everything that's inside of this now, whether it's high level ideas, whether it's the, just the space, whether it's silence with no words, whether it's a fan. It could be in the physical dimension or beyond it, whether it's, whether it's just pain, whether it's a lump in your chest or your, your neck, whether it's specific words, whether it's a part of you freaking out, whether it's a part of you trying to fix the one freaking out. What I want to offer you to do is just listen and don't do anything about because everything you hear will pass. And you're here to learn that you're the space for it to pass in and allow the ties inside to be seen. And it's through seeing deeper and deeper. There's another tie. There's another tie. There's another tie. Oh, I'm scared to purge my connection with my father. Oh, I'm scared to purge, you know, I'm scared to say goodbye to my mom for real. Oh, I'm scared of this breakup because my mom died while I was with this person. Someone could have that. And I mourned my mom somewhat, but got codependent on the person. Sometimes when you have long relationships, you have big events happen in your life and you grab the other person to not quite feel through them. That's a major cause of codependency. Lost a child with him, says Maggie. I'm sending you so much love. I'm so sorry. But you half mourn it and then half, we, at least we have each other. So then later, if you break up, the rest of what was not processed can come up. Everything that wasn't processed can come up. 
codependency helps you not have to process things. You don't have to face grief all the way. If you grab a drink, if you grab a person, if you grab a relationship, if you grab a title, if you grab an identification, if you grab a, I'm a parent now, if you grab whatever it is. Codependency helps you not process things all the way. Elizabeth says, great question. Codependency on being alone? Totally. Because if one thing is better than another way, right, then it's escaping people. So it's actually avoidancy. If you're codependent on being alone, it's out of the avoidance of being seen. So definitely look at that because it's not just you in the now and the byproduct is you're not in a relationship, right? It's you in the now saying, I'm scared of a relationship. I'm scared to be seen. I'm scared of intimacy. That's not intimacy. That's avoiding, right? Intimacy doesn't have to do with if a per person's there, but if you're doing something to get away from or to not look at something, that's a pattern. Mm -hmm.